How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Good. Amen. I tell you what, I'm going to ask you to do something. We'll do something a little different. Would you stand to your feet with me just a minute? I want to teach you uh, uh, a little chorus real quick. It's called This Is Our Church. We're going to change that up a little bit and, so, and, and, and sing it this way. This is our cowboy church. Amen. All right, so we'll sing it through once and then I'll sing it again. And uh, you sing it with me. We'll learn this little chorus. Right? This is our cowboy church. Set me on my feet. I 
so much. I, uh, we are glad to be here. My lovely wife Jade is right here on the front row and uh, make sure you say hi to her. She'll be back at the table after the service and uh, we're just, uh, we just tickled to death to be in Texas. We're, I'm originally from a small town in South Alabama. Uh, she's from Northwest Florida. We had to go to Nashville to meet and uh, we were probably about three and a half hours away from each other all those years and never knew it. But uh, that's just that's just how God works sometimes, Amen. And uh, so, but uh, I was raised uh, around a large family, and uh, the Harrisons are, are known in, in that in that part of Alabama for singing uh, and uh, and preaching. Uh, it's it's said down there that a Harrison can't sing for preaching and can't preach for singing. <laughs> And that is true. I get a little long-winded sometimes and have to, have to dial it back a little bit. And sometimes I don't. And, uh, but anyway, we, uh, so I, that's how I was raised. I, I was, I was uh, raised with a microphone in my hand pretty much. And 
uh, from the time I was five years old, been singing on stage with the family quartet and in church and leading church music. And, 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 and then when I was 15, I heard Randy Travis's Storms of Life album for the first time and fell in love with that kind of country music. And, um, and I saw stars, I saw CMT, I saw CMA awards, and I saw Big Silver Eagle Bus, and that's what I wanted. And so for, um, for a long time, I chased that dream and um, moved to Nashville and lived there for seven years. And then uh, doors just were not opening. Things were not happening. Had a few things happen. I traveled on the road with the band for a while, and, but, uh, but just never, uh, never, never could take off. And, and, um, and so uh, I, I got, into, uh, uh, got back into leading church music. And, and uh, after many years of that, and, Going through a uh, going through a divorce, uh, I said, you know what? I left some things on the table up there. I'm going back. So I went back, and this time I had a, a financial backer. Um, I had a producer in Nashville, and, th and I thought, this is it. We're going. We're on our way. And uh, so we had 16 Nashville studio cuts. Uh, had a CDX release to 1,700 radio stations. Uh, and a single and I thought things were taking off and the song went to uh, number 30 on the independent country music charts and stalled and didn't do another thing and uh, and then not long after that matter of fact is that while that was going on I found out that my producer uh, had cancer and, and in four months he was gone four months after that almost to the date my financial backer passes away and so the whole team that we had assembled was was gone except you know except for me it was a few others but, but except for me and I was like what do I do now and I was saved at a young age I was saved around eight years old and so I knew the Lord and I wasn't following him then I was following what Brent wanted but uh, I said what you know I, I, I asked the question what in the world do I do now you know I've sacrificed uh, move back up here away from family away from everybody and, and to do this and then you know what do I do now and uh, God said you know what you might try looking up you might try thinking about what I've done for you and that I saved your soul and that and that and that I have given you the gifts that I have and I want you to use them for me and so I said you know it's sad sometimes that it, it, it has to come to that, but sometimes just real, the real boys are hard-headed, you know? And, uh, and so God has to do some drastic things to get our attention. And so he did, and I, and I came to Jade, and we, were, we had met, and I'll get into that in just a little bit, but we had met and, and, and uh, were engaged at that point, if not married. I can't remember. We were married, okay. And, uh, and so, uh, so I came to her one night. I said, you know what? I said, uh, I said, God's got a hold to me, and, uh, and I think we're going to take this country music thing and give it to him and put the faith part of this and the Christian part of this and the country part of this all together. And, uh, and she, she, she didn't seem real excited at the moment. And I was like, well, you don't, you don't seem too happy. And she said, well, I'm ecstatic. She said, I've, just been, I know, I've known this all along. I've just been waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but she did. And it's, uh, I tell you what, since we surrendered, guys, I mean, doors, years after years and years of doors being closed in Nashville, um, <laughs> You're too country. You're too, you know, you're, you're, you're you know, and, and then, and then this last trip, you know, I had the age on me a little bit, and, you know, they won't, Nashville wants, uh, you know, 20 somethings and, and, um, and, and, and skinny jeans, and I ain't either one of those. <laughs> and you ain't gonna catch me in the ladder. And, uh, so, but, uh, so anyway, but door, door after door after door were, were closing. The minute that we, that we surrendered, and said, this is where we're going. Guys, doors started opening. Things started happening. And, um, and so, you know, radio stations would call and get our music out there. And songs that were uh, not even recorded for Christian country music but had a positive message that touched people, uh, we released out there. And they just started taking off. And so we've just been so blessed. And again, it's not about those accolades. I don't want you to hear me wrong. It's about the people's lives that are being touched that create that, okay? That's why we're here today. It's not to push an album. I'd love for you to take an album home with you, but it's not so I can put a, you know, a 15, a 10, and a 5 in my pocket. It's not so that I can put some cash in my pocket. 
It's so that, that me the message that, that we put into these songs and that I've written and others have written and, and we've paid to put on this album can, be, can, can go to, with you and can touch your life. And maybe you, somebody else hears it, or you can share it with somebody else, and it touches them in some way. That's what this is about. Anyway, I've gotten long-winded, but I told you I would. But uh, anyway, so this song right here we wrote when I first moved back to Nashville. We were thinking about uh, time growing up in my, our grandparents' house and, and uh, spending time around the table. Uh, whether that be holiday meals or whether that just be on the weekends when you know when we would go over to grandparents' house. It's important, guys. We live in a fast-paced society, and we've forgotten what that means, and we don't take time to do that anymore. That's what this song talks about. It's called Around the Table. thing that happened. And I got a reason for telling you this. Uh, uh, we had a real strong sense of home. Um, and, uh, and so it really, really 
was was a strong feeling that we reminded each other of of home and all those things that I just sang about and talked about. And so our spirits immediately connected and bore witness with one another. Uh, it, it was I, neither one of us was looking for this, but God knew what He was doing. And he just, like magnets, just connected us. And so uh, we dated, and I asked her to marry me. And uh, and so when I did that, I, I wanted to I wanted to put that miraculous thing in in the form of a song. And I wanted to give that to her on our wedding day. So I did. So I got to thinking back about things that happened in my childhood growing up. And the things that were good memories of home that reminded me of, of what we have and had at that moment. And so that's, that's what this song is about. So it's a, it's a love song, obviously, between, you know, for us that I wrote for our wedding. But later on, the more I sang it, God revealed something to me about this song. This song's called Being Home. It's the title track of the new album. But I got to thinking about it. God was like, you, I want you to think about this whole phrase, being home. Yes, we're going to be at home with God in heaven when we die or when he comes and raptures the church, right? But it's deeper than that. It's more than that, guys. God is a relational God. He created us because he wanted to be in relationship with us. He, he loves relationships so much that he gave us a second chance when we messed up the first one. Amen? That's how much he loves us. So he created a way through the cross of Jesus Christ for us to be in relationship with him again when we messed the first one up. That's how much he loves it. And he was like, you know what? I, I want you to be at home with me right now. I'm like, what? Yeah, I want you to be at home. Think about the great things of your upbringing. And I know sometimes home is not such a great place, but there's some great memories that you have. And you think about that warm, fuzzy feeling that you get, you know, or got at home as a child. Or even when you go now, maybe when you go to mom and them's, you have a great time around, around the table or whatever. God wants that for us right now. So, yes, it's a love song. Uh, it's a sentimental love song between us that I sang for her. The first time she ever heard it was at the wedding, and but it's but it is a it's a it's a it's a heart it's a vertical thing too that God wants to be at home with us. This is the word song song is called "Being Home." <coughs>
and you know I believe it. You had me feeling just like a kid from the very first kiss. Top of my lungs, trying all night not to open my eyes. Knowing Santa's gonna come. Yeah, you're like coffee on the back porch, riding my first quarter horse. Can't really say who they